Mr. Babbitt. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Secretary, for being here today. Uh, despite <clears throat> never before seen levels of funds going to your department, our transportation for does not seem to be uh, safer today than it did just a few years ago. Uh, and while pumping billions into green energy and subsidized mm -hmm. alternatives to gas-powered cars, <laughs> yeah. we've also seen more major transportation disasters under the current administration than really in any administration that I can recollect. Record level car fatalities, trains derailing, chemical accidents, sky-high gas prices, ports with record-breaking log jam delays, which I represent several, union strikes, workforce issues, delays at airports near misses on runways, grounded planes, system-wide failures, the terrible, horrible 2022 holiday flight cancellations that saw so many American families separated uh, on Christmas and New Year's. The list seems uh, to go on and on. I understand that your relationship with Congress over the last two and a half years has been, been pretty favorable for you. You've gotten seem, seemingly everything you've asked for and then some, hundreds of billions in extra funding for DOT, uh, thanks to the IIJA and the Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, so what do you have to show for it? What impact has that money had on the average American? And I would ask uh, that before you start talking about victories with uh, climate victories, and social justice achievements at the cost of billions of taxpayer dollars, please ask yourself this. Does that green subsidy, that solar R&D project, or that new mandate to go after oil and gas help anyone if Americans can't rely on safe, affordable transportation? And I'm hopeful that you're, you're uh, taking your job of helping Americans get from point A to point B uh, safely uh, very seriously. But from what I can see, your office is simply writing blank checks to fulfill uh, Mr. Biden's climate initiatives while leaving the average Joe uh, in the dust. A few questions I'd like to ask for the record. In 2021, we started hearing reports that the federal government under Joe Biden and Alejandro Mayorkas was inexplicably uh, allowing scores of illegal immigrants into the country who ultimately boarded commercial aircraft without passports or any other type of identification to fly across the country. I wanted to ask you how you feel uh, uh, letting thousands of individuals without passports whose motives and backgrounds are unknown uh, to us, uh, to us uh, board domestic flights, and are these flights still occurring? Well, I don't know all the details of the Homeland Security side of that, but I would point out that as a general rule, when you get on a domestic uh, flight, you don't have to show a passport. That, that's true for anybody. As to the blank checks, I would argue that uh, expenditures like the $18.3 million that uh, I approved for the Bayport Terminal uh, is not a, a random Biden administration priority, but something that benefits both your district uh, and the American people. Uh, we are investing in roads and bridges, ports and airports, rail, transit, and I'm also puzzled by the implication or the assertion that the rate of uh, railroad accidents or other safety issues is higher under our administration than in previous administrations, uh, when that's simply not supported by the record. You mentioned flight cancellations. Right now, they stand at 1.6%. That is actually lower than they were in 2019 before the pandemic. I would be happy to provide further data to help well, clear see. up any of the inaccuracies in your, uh, in your question so that we can get to the most important facts about safety. Having said that, I don't believe that we should be satisfied with the current status quo on safety, which is why I would love to get you on the record in favor of that Railway Safety Act, Congressman. I'd love to see those, Mr. Secretary. And uh, the uh, domestic flights allowing people on without passports who are foreign, who have entered illegally, doesn't seem to square with the security of our, of our, of our nation. Congressman, if you're of the opinion that uh, uh, every passenger boarding a domestic flight needs to produce a passport, I'd be happy to refer that to Homeland Security, but that's not our jurisdiction at DOT. I understand. Members of this committee are very frustrated with the ongoing delays that applicants are experiencing by the Maritime Administration. Uh, I understand the need for a thorough evaluation process, but the current process has consistently failed to meet the 356-day statutory timeline for a record of decision. For example, of the six applications currently with MARAD 
and pending a record of decision, two of these applications are well past the 356-day statutory timeline, one nearing the 1,400-day mark and the other nearing an 800-day mark. Why are these pending applications experiencing such severe delays in the process, and, is, and why are, is MARAD and DOT not doing more to help applicants through this process? Well, Congressman, we're, we're committed to helping project sponsors get their projects done, and one thing we're trying to make sure of is that the federal process doesn't endanger the completion of the project. I know this is counterintuitive, but uh, when you look at those longer timelines associated with some of those permitting processes, what is happening is that Marad's interpretation of fidelity to the statute requiring 365 days can be met by stopping the clock if there's information that the project sponsor doesn't have ready. That way it gives them a chance to get that information in uh, without there being a risk of the project getting killed just because they didn't meet the, uh, uh, the 365 if we had not interpreted that as business days or process days. If there are other steps we can take to make sure that, that working with those project sponsors we can have a smoother flow, we're always open to discussing that because we want to make sure that uh, whatever the nature of the project, uh, while of course making sure that, that, that federal law is met and that there's responsibility with taxpayer dollars, uh, that there's no unnecessary delays and certainly that there's no unnecessary delays under our control. Well, we, seem, we, we certainly hope so. Yield back. 